Here we go. So welcome to the crypto show presented by GSK Wealth Builders. And uh, what we're going to do today is just go over what happened this week in crypto. So today is 26 March 2021. Uh, the week's been going mostly sideways for Bitcoin. We started off at the beginning of the week with a drop. Um, we'll see what happens this weekend. Crypto held strong around 50,000 and it's just been bouncing around between 50 and 55 all week long. Altcoins have been uh, going down as well. So uh, the top three things this week, we had pool together, crypto lottery, staking is a very popular thing to do right now in crypto everywhere, and NFTs. So we're going to go over the NFT craze as well. So pool together is uh, an interesting platform. It's um, a crypto lottery where you can deposit crypto and every week, if you don't win, you get your money back. So you've never heard of that before in the regular lottery, everyone loses money. Um, it makes no sense to actually play the lottery. People do get lucky, but the odds are so bad. So with pool together, what they're doing is they only have 6,000 users right now is you can deposit Ethereum and the Ethereum will be staked as a group. So if you have a pool of a thousand people and they're pooling Ethereum at 6% annually, those thousand people might have a few million dollars in the pool. And then what they do is once a week, one person wins 100% of that staking. So it wouldn't make sense for you to have $10 uh, generating 6%, but with 6,000 people generating money, it's actually um, a big lottery. So the, the lottery has grown from 1,000 users in October to 6,000 users now, and it's going to keep going. So you deposit at any time as long as you have the deposit you're eligible to win prizes and then you never lose so uh, the second thing we're going to talk about is staking so staking is um, taking over blockchain when it was eventually or when it was originally um, created was proof of work <clears throat> so with proof of work you had the miners um, like the Bitcoin miners spending you know thousands of kilowatts or millions of kilowatts of energy to protect the blockchain. So now with staking, you're actually putting up your coins. So stakers secure the blockchain by staking or delegating tokens to a validator. The validator participates in a consensus to validate the transactions, and then the rewards are earned from the network performing operations. So the stake funds can be slashed for unavailability or malicious behavior. So what this means is you put your money up you become a participant on the blockchain. And if you um, cheat, they take your money. So instead of using your power, you're actually putting your money up. So I think it's a good idea to stake. Uh, delegation. So what your staker is going to do is they're going to sign with their private key to delegate their tokens to a validator. That validator is going to act on your behalf, uh, running the network and voting. So the validators perform network operations like consensus signing and distributing signing groups. They own rewards. So these rewards can be like Ethereum's rewards are going to start off at 20%, drop down to around 7% is where they want it to be. And then, of course, they slash the funds. So uh, that's a good thing. So then they have companies. So there's a company in the U.S. called Staked. And what that company does is uh, they're a traditional investment vehicle. So you, as a, say, a hedge fund manager that doesn't want to get into crypto themselves, but they want to get the exposure, they can bring their money to um, this company and that company could do all the staking. So they have programmers, platforms, everything to do staking live. And uh, they grow their ETH position. So Ethereum, they're estimating 7.5% annual return on Ethereum, which is amazing compared to what uh, the US dollar is getting. Uh, as long as the price and the value stays strong. And then they have providing services. So, and also they're going to have uh, tax advantage account so you'll be able to stake in your 401k or your IRA in the states hopefully in Canada they'll be able to stake in their RRSP or tax-free savings account so that's huge uh, number three the NFT boom so um, a baseball player recently or a former MLB baseball player uh, Mika Johnson just sold this NFT artwork for 1.3 million dollars in seven I think it was in seven minutes so um, why this is big is because artists were never getting um, their fair share. Uh, what would usually happen is an artist would sell their, their art for cheap. 
Um, even if they were amazing artists, they weren't really getting the respect they deserve once they would pass away. Um, because that art had scarcity, all of a sudden this art would be worth a lot of money. So one of the cool things is that when you sell or mint an NFT on the blockchain, every time your art is resold, you can actually program a commission into it. And the blockchain can prove who owns it. So yes, people can duplicate this and take pictures of it, but there's only one owner. And as long as being an owner is valued in this world, these NFTs will stay having value. So uh, that's it. So we'll go with the market snapshot, which is an overview of the market. So right now, uh, the global crypto market cap is $1.748 trillion. So when I started in 2016, 2017, the market went from 200 billion to around 800 billion and then crashed back down to 200 billion so now we're at 1.7 trillion so the market's huge um, crypto in general is only used by one percent of the world's population a hundred million people use crypto right now the next hundred million will probably be brought an article came out today the next hundred million will probably be brought on by institutional investors and artists and nft users people using the platform for their own um i guess for their own use 24 hour volume was 122 billion dollars and bitcoin's dominance is at 59 percent. so it dropped from 65 percent a couple weeks ago to 59 percent. ethereum is 11 percent. it was around 14 percent, i believe so this is just a chart of the bitcoin dominance you're seeing bitcoin at 60 percent of all transactions or all wealth in the market you have Ethereum at 11%, Tether at 2 Binance Coin at 2 I think Binance Coin is going to get up there with Ethereum. Um, their platform is just faster. Well, it's faster and it's cheaper, right? So that's why I think Cardano, once they come out, they could be big. Polkadot is huge right now for the, the IDO processes. So that's what we have right now. Top 10 coins. Uh, it's the same ones with the dominance. So Bitcoin's at the top. You got Ethereum. Tether, Binance Coin, Cardano, Polkadot, XRP is still holding in there. I think they're going to fall out of the top 10. Uniswap, that's my favorite coin right now, or my favorite company, because they, they gifted everyone who used Uniswap 400 coins. So that's going to be the new way that crypto companies market, is they're going to be able to see customers. For example, one inch exchange if they wanted to draw customers to one inch, one inch exchange they could actually go on the uniswap blockchain see who uses uniswap all of the wallets and they could airdrop money or tokens to people on the uniswap as a gift from one inch exchange money does buy loyalty sometimes so other times they might just sell so sushi swap sushi swap is huge they're the biggest i believe when it comes to total value locked so um the top top exchanges so the top exchange right now in volume is mdex that is a korean exchange and it was launched it was launched in january 2021 that's crazy so it's launched this year right off the bat number one exchange we got uniswap like i mentioned for ethereum 800 billion or yeah 800 million dollars today it uh, did 19 percent of the market and pancake swap which is the binance fork of uniswap that one came out september 2020 and they already you're doing 785 million dollars a day so that's crazy so the thing about crypto is you have coins just coming out of nowhere and people are using them so in DeFi, which is my favorite space um DeFi pulse we're showing 40 billion dollars of value locked in DeFi. MakerDAO is 15% of that. So MakerDAO is the king of DeFi right now. And uh, DeFi Pulse Index, we're looking at 402. So I don't know what the index is right now, but that's what it is it's saying is 402. So total value locked uh, from February, we hit about 45 billion. Once the market, <clears throat> once the market started to dip, 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 we hit 35 billion. Then we tap 45 again, and we keep going in between the two. So we'll see what happens there, but. Uh, I think we're going to get to 100 billion, 100 billion locked in DeFi by probably July. Just at the pace it's going right now, and there's lots of jobs. So Maker down number one, six billion locked. You got Compound at number two, um, at 5.8 billion locked. Ave, really good platform, five billion. So and then number ten Bancor at the bottom is 1.6 billion. 
Uh, Uniswap. Uniswap has four billion locked. Sushi Swap has four billion. So what locked means is it's people who took their coins, they put them on the exchange, and they are providing liquidity to the network. So they have locked their coins up. They've said, I don't need the coins. Just pay me a commission on every trade. And the commission on trades that you can get is 0.3% of the total volume. So if you're seeing the volume here at, uh, where was the volume? So if you're seeing the volume every day at 700 million, Uniswap has 800 billion or 800 million a day. So 0.3% of that is fees. And then they pay that 0.3% to the people who have locked up the tokens in the exchange. So you can make a lot of money just locking up your tokens and, and, uh, yeah. So then DeFi station, that is Binance's uh, DeFi, they have 13 billion locked. So you have 40 billion and 13 billion. So 53 billion in total is locked between the two platforms. The, the change is 2%. Number one is pancake swap, uh, auto farm. I've used that before pancake bunny. I've never heard of that, but they already have $687 million. So Venus and pancake swap are 10 billion combined. And then the rest are about another billion combined. So I'll go to a couple questions that we had. Uh, this week that I think everyone should uh, benefit from. So one person said, I want to mine helium, but there's no other hotspots close to me. Will I still earn a good income? Answer to that is no, but I guess good is subjective. So for me, if you're going to buy a helium hotspot for $450 and then only earn $8 a day or yeah, eight, yeah, $8 a day, I don't think it's worth it. Um, some people would say it is worth it, where in Calgary, for example, they're earning $150 a day. So it just depends on your opinion, but I would say it's going to take you a while to get your money back. And that's if the earnings stay the same, and I don't think it, they were going to stay the same. They're probably going to drop as more people come online. Which exchange is better, Coinbase, Binance, or Uniswap? I would say that all of them have their purpose. Coinbase is for people who want to keep it simple. You're giving them all the power. When you put your coins on Coinbase, they're probably staking and making profits with your coins. The benefit is security, so you don't have to remember your private keys. You don't have to remember anything. You can just email them and have a login and, and access things that way. But the thing about Coinbase is they charge you to use it. Then they make money off of your money and they don't give you any dividends back. So. That's Coinbase where Binance, Binance, they pay interest on every single coin you hold in Binance. However, it's still centralized. So if they get hacked or if Coinbase gets hacked, you're done. However, Binance has been hacked twice and both times they were lucky enough to get the coins back within less than four days. So they have a really strong team. I've never seen it. I've never seen exchange get hacked and get their money back. So except for Binance and Uniswap. Uniswap is decentralized. So the, the benefit of Uniswap is you can get any coin available as long as someone's selling it. Within minutes of that coin being invented, there's liquidity. The disadvantage of Coinbase is the fees because of Ethereum. Ethereum's fees are crazy. Uh, to get a coin yesterday, I had to spend almost $600 in gas fees to get that coin. However, I think that coin could 10X. And so that's why I bought it. And I'm just going to hold it and hopefully uh, it sees the good results. What they do is they are bringing tokenization to anything in the world. So you're going to have a security coin where you can tokenize real estate. And instead of going through a mortgage and everything, you could have someone just have coins and 10,000 people own one building. So you could buy Times Square with a bunch of crypto coins. I think that's amazing. And uh, it'll be borderless. So that's all we have for today. And I just wanted to let people know the Helium business manual that I made is still available. So if you want to read the report that I wrote about Helium and why I think it's so good, uh, just ask me for an email and I can email you the report. Uh, I have everything from the intro, what they do, who the suppliers are, what a hotspot is, the antennas, if you want to upgrade your antennas, hotspot placement, earnings comparables between different cities and areas, anything for developers if they want to build on the helium network and some other resources so that is available just uh, send a comment on the video or send me an email or a tweet so that's all i got for today thanks
Make sure you like and subscribe the video. If you saw, if you got any value from this, please like it because it helps the channel. I want the channel to grow and I want to be able to collaborate with everyone. So I'm sharing information with people. If you have any information to share with me, please put it in the comments. Uh, send me a message because it's going to help us all. So that's all I got for today. Thanks.